If you would like to benefit from the misfortune of others, you have come to the right place. Today, I'm going to go over seven waterfowl hunting blunders that you can avoid. Hey, George here. Learning from your mistakes is good, but learning from somebody else's mistakes, that is way better. Today, I'm going to share seven waterfowl hunting blunders with you guys. Now, these are not just bullet points. Each one comes with an anecdote, a story to help illustrate exactly what happened and why it was a blunder. Hopefully, you can laugh at these things and learn not to repeat them. These are things either I've done or I was the victim of someone else doing them, so hopefully, you can also avoid being that guy. Number one on the list is hunting in water that's too deep for your waders. When I was very new, I had my first set of waders. We went out one day hunting water that we thought was a lot shallower than it was, a little cove on some big water, and we went to throw out the decoys and realized, man, this got too deep, like 15, 20 feet from the shore. So what we did was we set up our decoys extra close to the shore, we moved our blind back further to give us a little buffer room, and then we just hoped anything we shot would have fallen in close. However, that is never how it works. First bird we downed, we I tried to go out and recover it. It was like 20, 25 feet from the shore, not far at all, and I couldn't get halfway there. Water was all the way up to here. I was just totally outmatched. I had to retreat. We watched this bird for about an almost an hour, circled around this cove, and waited till the wind blew it close enough to the shore where I could get out with a long stick and try to hook it in. We did thankfully finally recover that bird before it floated, but wow, that was terrible. Always know how deep the water is. Check it before you go out, and if it's too deep, if it's not safe or just not reasonable, find a different spot. Number two on the list is trying to sneak up on ducks with a crazy dog. Now, I didn't do this, but this has happened to me. We were out one day jumping hunting and another guy was up ahead in front of us that we didn't realize what was going on until it was too late and he was out trying to sneak up on ducks with this dog and this dog was running around crazy just darting 100 yards back and forth in every possible direction bell on its neck making all kinds of noise this guy was delusional thinking he was somehow going to sneak up on ducks on this one pond that we were trying to get to. Those ducks heard that dog from a quarter mile away and they were gone. He just saw them fly away from a distance. It was absolutely ridiculous. If you're going to try to jump hunt ducks with a dog, you've got to have a really well-trained dog. That dog's got to be quiet and you got to be able to just point to that dog for him to sit and sit quietly and patiently until it hears a gunshot or a whistle to come help you out. It could be great to hunt ducks on foot with a dog, but you cannot sneak up on birds with a crazy loud dog with a bell around its neck. Like, who does that? Who puts a bell around a dog's neck and then tries to sneak up to water's edge with that dog? Ridiculous. Number three waterfowl hunting blunder, putting the decoys in too close easy to do this, especially if the water's way too deep. But what ends up happening here, guys, is those birds come in, they look at those decoys, and they see you right next to them. There's got to be space between you and the decoys, and I have done this multiple times. You're sitting there. You think you're really well brushed in, but you're right there. The decoys are right there. Those birds are focusing right on you, looking you right in the eye, you know, 11 yards from your decoys, or 11 feet from your decoys, which has been the case, and then they just flare, and you're sitting like, oh, I don't know why. Maybe our camo's not good enough. Maybe our hide's not good enough. Maybe we don't have enough decoys. That's because you're an idiot, because you set up right on top of the decoys, and they're just staring at you while they're flying around. Number four blunder, ruining other people's hunts by scouting like an idiot. We were out one day jump hunting, and we're going from hole to hole. We are moving with the highest level of stealth that we possibly could. And then we run right into this guy who is out. This is early November. He's out there with a white hoodie and blue jeans on with a set of binoculars. 
No gun, just white camo hoodie with blue jeans and binoculars. And he's going from hole to hole, walking right up to the water, making all kind of noise, dressed like a neon sign, spooking every bird out as he goes to see if there's birds in these holes. And then we realize, oh, this guy just visited every single hole that was in front of us that we had hunted our way in to get to and spooked out every bird. Now, why would you do that? Well, guys, listen, if you're going to be scouting, especially in season, but this goes for all the time, you've got to be stealthy. You don't want to spook out the birds, whether it's for other people's benefit or your own. If you find birds and spook them out and they don't come back, that's on you. Then what good was your scouting? You've got to be sneaky. Now, I don't know why this guy didn't have a gun with him. It was hunting season. Why was he at least not wearing camo? It boggles my mind, people. Don't be that guy. Sometimes you got to scout in the middle of the season, even during the middle of the hunting day, and that can be okay. Just be considerate of other people and use your brain in terms of not spooking out birds. Number five hunting blunder, and that is walking around like a goon squad trying to jump hunt birds. Okay, I've been in the blind, public land, sitting there, brushed in, decoy spread out on a nice piece of water, deep in the woods, I mean a mile back, and you just hear all this ruckus. Group of three, four guys just walking through the woods, cutting up, talking, being loud, just walk right up to water's edge with their shotguns while they're still talking, not wearing camo on their face, not wearing hats, not wearing a mask, nothing, just talking in half plain clothes with shotguns trying to sneak up on ducks to shoot them. Guys, that might work like, you know, in a park next to a playground where people feed the ducks out of their hands with bread, but in the woods, ducks are skittish, easily spooked, and they are gone. You will never even see the birds fly away if that's you. They're 10 feet away from us, just staring at the water, getting ready to shoot my decoys. Unbelievable shenanigans. Don't be that guy. If you're jump hunting, you've got to be the sneakiest you've ever been in your entire life. Jump hunting is best practiced as a solo sport. If you've got two or three people, you've got to be committed to stealth, to moving slowly, to being decked out in camo, trying to only move when the wind blows, hopefully when it's wet so you don't step on leaves and things and make noise. Not these guys though, buffoons. Number six waterfowl hunting blunder, and that is remaining part of the 91% of people that don't subscribe to these videos who don't get these tips who don't take more birds. Seriously, click that subscribe button. No, the real number six is hunting water that's too shallow for your boat. This can be serious. All right, I'll give you my story. I don't like to share this too often, but it is the worst hunting experience of my life. We went out, decided we were gonna float this creek. It was a couple mile float, should have taken us two hours. Our plan was to float the creek, get a limited ducks, and then have lunch at a restaurant that was close by where we were planning to get out of the water. Well, two hours turned to three, to four, to five, to seven, to eight and a half, might have even ended up being nine hours, you know, supposed to be a three hour tour, right? Well, we kept running out of water. We did not realize that our little two person canoe was drafting way too deep for the water level on this creek that day. We spent more time dragging the canoe and carrying the canoe than we did riding in the canoe. And we make so much noise, scraping the bottom, scraping rocks. We were so exhausted. We had flipped this thing over a few times. Of course, we did not bring sufficient supplies with us. So we we are dehydrated, we are starving, we are aggravated, we are exhausted. Got like 30,000 steps in this day. We'd flip this boat over. We were soaking wet multiple times. We did eventually come across some birds, but we were so exhausted and fed up, we could not even hunt them effectively. It was a complete and total disaster. Learn the water. Understand how deep it is. Do some research 
search. Get out there. Check the depth in a couple places. And if you're going to go out, try to go out in the safest, flattest boat and then have a plan B. Okay, we had no plan B. We had to get all the way to our exit spot. We had no other way to get out of here in case something went wrong. It was just stupid on every possible level. Floating can be a great way to get birds, but if you do it the wrong way, it can be an utter disaster. Number seven waterfowl hunting blunder, and that is leaving down birds on the water. Okay, I had one season, this was years ago, one season where I lost more of the birds that I downed than I took home. Okay, it was very sad. It was very frustrating. Again and again, you'd down a bird and you'd sit there and go, well, you know, I think there's more birds in the air. Let's just wait a few minutes, you know, just see what else is going to come in. Don't want to spook them by getting up. And then, you know, 10, 15 minutes pass. You go, okay, let's go and get that, 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 where'd it go? Where'd the bird go? It was dead. I shot it. It was belly up. I'll give you one great example. Okay, I was out. I shot this duck. This was the story, actually, that was one of the key things that pushed me away from using steel shot. I hit this bird. I think it was a mallard at about 30-ish yards with some steel number fours. Good pattern density. I tested the ammo. It was good. I'd hit this bird multiple times, and it's laying belly up, head underwater, dead in the middle of this water. I made my way out to it eventually, took a little bit, got the bird, brought it back to shore. It had a head wound right in the side of the head, bleeding out of its head, among other places. Carried this bird to the shore. It's as dead as dead can be. I put the bird down. It gets up and tries to escape on foot. I'm like, the bird was dead. I hit it in the head. It was a headshot. How can this even be possible? Well, birds can be a lot more resilient than you think they are. That BB did not penetrate deep enough to terminate this bird, and then I had a mess on my hands. I did get that particular bird home, but it was a sad story, and it just illustrated to me why you've gotta be absolutely vigilant. I had to develop a new resolution that year that I was not gonna take my eye off a down bird until I was absolutely sure it was dead and in my hands. And since I did that, I have lost almost no birds. I think I lost one, maybe two birds, period, since then. All right. You just got to be vigilant. You got to be careful. You got to keep your eyes on the ducks. And if I had a number eight hunting blunder, it would be choose the right ammo. Pick the ammo that is ideal, that is correct for exactly how you're hunting, your range, game, gun and choke tube. I can't talk about that now, but I did an entire video on the subject that you can find right here. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you and go get them in the woods.